you can you be more specific because this could take I could go into a rabbit hole of boring life. Um, okay, so all right, so you moved from uh, Iran to Canada. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. what? What do you have like your the political beliefs you hold right now against uh, Israel and Palestine or uh, the uh, the Greater Middle East? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm. I grew up in a very conservative country, um, a theocracy. Um, you know, growing up in a, where I grew up, you could I saw the value of ideas that we didn't have the the me methods and values and standards that we didn't have in Iran um, year over year contributed to a lot of the problems and a lot of suffering and a lot of misery that people experience in Iran, mm -hmm. um, specifically liberal values, freedoms, you know, freedom of speech, freedom of many freedoms, you know, separation of power, secularism, mm -hmm. um, all of okay. these ideas, ideas that make other countries prosper, we didn't have those. So it made me, uh, it made me become an activist in 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 the direction of fighting for those values that we could, we we it wasn't just theory for us. Like we 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 studied it, but we also experienced it firsthand. How much. Um, a, a society suffers when, when the right ideas are not the ones that are used to govern. Okay, so uh, that's good. But uh, is uh, ethno state, ethno religious states, like which is Zionist Israel, is that uh, what you call it, a good governance for the Middle East? So basically, you're saying you, know, you don't like the Iranian government because they're religious. Uh, I don't know if they're ethnic as well. I don't know that much of the, the Iranian regime. But uh, I mean, Israel as itself as well, it is a very religious. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, country is based on religion. It's funded on religion. The whole context for mm. for what they do is based on religion, which just what do you call it? The layer, the cake of it. You know, they're just like a little cover of uh, you know secularism. Uh, you know, um, secularism, democracy, and all that kind of stuff. But outside of that, it is a uh, ethno-religious state. So, what is? What do you support well, Israel, even though it is the same messianic uh, religious? Uh, state. Okay, so if there's there's two different things you're claiming here. They're separate, right? Mm -hmm. um, being an ethno state and being religious is are not the same thing, right? Yeah. So we have to. Yeah, yeah, we could we could uh, see look at both of those claims, but here's the thing: you're saying why would you support a country? Um, that is an ethno state and is based on religion. I don't think Israel is based on religion, and we could argue about that. But l let's say if I g if, if I gave it to you that it was an ethno state and it was based on religion, okay, mm -hmm. I will still support it. I support Iran. Mm -hmm. Iran is based on Iran's government is religious, mm -hmm. right? I support every country. There's a difference between the reason why you recognize, so for example, I'm against, I'm not against Israel. I am against Likud party. I am against the religious parties in Israel. I'm, I am against um, the fascists, the ethno-fascists in Israel, but I, I'm, I'm against, against the religious, far-right religious parties in Israel. Right. Okay. I'm against the trend in Israel that is becoming um, more and more religious. Um, I'm, I'm against the influence of religious groups in politics and in education and in mil and military in Israel. But I don't see that as being anti-Israel. I see that as being pro-Israel. I see if you are so if you support a country, you see its flaws. And you criticize those flaws. That's not a position against that country. That's a position for that country. You you see those problems and you criticize them because you want the best for that country. But it's not Israel that I support. I support every single country on the planet because I want the best for every country on the planet. And 
I am, I'm not just pro-Israel, I am also pro-Palestine. Palestine is not a country, but I want it to be a country. So I don't see being pro-Israel as being anti-Palestine. I think the best way to be pro-Israel is, is to be pro-Palestine. And the best way to be pro-Palestine is to be pro-Israel. Mm. All right, but there seems to be like uh, uh, a lot of people in the what do you call in the Iranian community. Even uh, I think was it the the descendant of the Shah went to Israel? Yeah, uh, I don't know when it was. Mm -hmm. I think it was a couple of years ago. He, I think he went to uh, uh, to Israel, and uh, I think he was what do you call it? gave his support to Israel and. Uh, And there seems to be you, as well. You, like, oh, they, yeah, go ahead. You, do you not support? Do you not support Israel? Me? Uh, no, I don't. Look, like, as it is right now, no, I don't support Israel. Like what they call this Irish Palestinian solidarity campaign. We are uh, yeah. calling out because what they call it. Uh, everybody seems to be calling out. You know, uh, do you condemn Islamic Jihad? Do you condemn uh, what, uh, or what they call it, Hamas? Do you condemn this and that? That you know, all the fault of the Middle East. Is because of Islam, even though Islam has been there, I don't know, for thousands of years, and even Judaism as well. But nobody talks about that uh, the American imperialism project has been going on since, uh, I don't know, a couple of decades you now, uh, probably 60, 70 decades. Uh, why do you not, the, why do, why do you not support Israel? Of, oh, because it's a colonial apartheid state that is slowly ethnic cleansing uh, the native population. Uh, how is it uh, ethnic? How is it? How is it ethnically cleansing? It's ethnically cleansing. Yeah. Okay. It's what is, cleansing. Like, let me. Uh, what do you mean? Yes. Yes. Okay, sorry. So, sorry. Sorry. There's a delay. There's a delay. So I didn't. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Sorry okay. about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's ethnically cleansing because uh, there was a what do you call the native population there was uh, diverse. Like for example, like let's look at the Christian Palestinians, right? In Bethlehem, I, I forgot their population was, but it is what you call like it was 20 of their population as a, what it was like before. Like whether it was Christian, whether it is uh, Muslim, uh, whether it is uh, Druze as well, every one of them is being what you call it. Uh, uh, I wouldn't say cleansed, but like, uh, but they'll be slowly, slowly what you call it, either pushed out of the country or basically forced out of the country because of these racist laws. Say you can't buy this. You can't marry here. You can't own this. There's what they call all these glass ceilings they put in place, and uh, you know of uh, that are settler colonialists to push them out, or like even to bribe them out as well. Like you know, so basically, like you know, they they're coming to their houses and offering them so much money, and uh, taking those houses and leaving them. So that is why right now there's very very few of uh, of the diverse How, what it is Christian and Muslim. Yeah. But 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 okay, ethnic. So you're saying Christian and Muslim, those are not ethnicities, those are religions, know, you know, the right? Palestinians, that's what I'm talking about, the Palestinians, they, uh, they, but, like, they are diverse to begin with. Yeah, they're Christian, Muslim. Okay, but the, the Palestinian is also not an ethnicity. So the ethnicity would be Arab, for example. Mm -hmm. But Arab, a, Arab, the population of Arabs, uh, both in Israel mm -hmm. and all the land between the river and the sea has increased significantly since the inception of Israel. So it has... Um, what do you mean? Like there were hundreds of... Ooh, no, no, not as, not, as a per, not as a percentage. I'm talking total numbers. Mm -hmm. The Arabs in Israel as a number have increased mm -hmm. significantly since mm -hmm. the inception of Israel in the region. So do you know? Do you want me to give? Do you want me to give you an example of actual ethnic cleansing? Is the population of Jew, the population of Jews in Arab countries mm -hmm. and Muslim countries since the inception of Israel has mm -hmm. been dramatically decreased because they've been forced out of Ar Arab and Islamic countries since the inception of Israel. Okay. Okay. So well, let, let, all right. Let me let me get let me respond to that one though. But because what do you call you said that uh, the Arab Jews left their countries even though they lived there thousands of years or in, in Iran as well. Uh, I've met uh, Iranian Israelis as well. Uh, that you yeah, they left. I left. They left those countries. One of the reasons they left those countries is because of the Levon affair. Do you know what the Levon affair is? No, but but you you by Israeli you mean Jewish when when they weren't Israeli they were, were talking about Jewish 
citizens of Arab and Muslim countries. Yeah, that's what I said. But you know, but that that is, yeah. There's a Levon affair. The Levon affair is uh, when the Mossad went in there in the 1950s. If you, if everybody doesn't know this, the the Mossad went into the 1950s to get more Jews to come to Israel. So they bombed what they call synagogues, mm -hmm. empty hotels, and etc. I looked into that. Yeah. I looked into that. I know what you're referring to. There's no evidence for that. First of all, that's a claim. What about many Israeli, even looked, Israeli writers wrote about it. But is, what you yes, I saw that. I I saw that. But but even first of all, I saw that that's a claim that hasn't been verified yet. But even if it was verified, it doesn't actually uh, explain. We're talking about a much much bigger number that a, a, a few events does not explain. The actual reason, if you actually go study the actual reason, is the heavy um, oppression and, and and pressure by the Islamic governments on Jewish people after the inception of Israel. A lot of these people were being, I mean, and also from Iran after the Islamic Revolution, right? So that's that's an actual example of ethnic cleansing when you can see the massive drop. You can't. You don't see a massive drop on, in these high numbers because of one bombing here and there. You don't see this one high. 10,000 people dead, man. That's not one bombing, man. Anyway, go ahead, Joe. Yeah, but you don't see hundreds of thousands of people migrating from more than 20 Islamic and Arab countries moving to Israel by force because of these bombings, right? And again, no. that what you're saying... What you're saying is hasn't been verified, but even if it was, it doesn't explain such a consistent uh, multi-decade drop in population. You know, well, I'll like explain in, it to you. I'll explain in, it to you. Uh, I'll ex okay. Okay. let me explain it to you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. So after the fall of the Soviet Union, yeah, there was a what do you call it? Aliyah. That's what they call it. Yeah, M migration to Israel. There was a lot of Aliyah from uh, Russia, Ukraine, uh, Moldova. I don't know how many. Like the, like the Soviet Union was big. So many countries and like so many of those countries have Jewish people. So that significantly increased what they call the Jewish population in, uh, in Israel. But you don't call it as an ethnic cleansing of the, what do you call it, of the Eastern Europe, of, uh, of those Jews moving there. No, they moved there because of poverty, because they saw better opportunity for them with Israel. So that's why they moved to uh, to Israel because they don't want to deal with crime, they don't want to deal with poverty. Same thing in the Middle East. Like yeah, they, they like everybody saw like what it called yeah in this Jewish country, I could be more powerful than where I am right now in this Jewish country. Unless I can have better opportunities for me and my family than I have right now. So that is why they moved over there. So yeah, of course, if I was a Yemeni Jew, you know, even though they, they lived, lost uh, like, everything. Now, no, they no, lost they didn't everything. The Yemeni Jews they lived did. for thousands of years, for thousands of years with the with the Jews and uh, with the Muslims in the Yemen. They left because yeah, because Yemen is a what do you call it? Is a country that has a lot of problems. It has a it's a country with poverty. So that is why they left uh, Yemen and went to uh, Israel. Same thing with Ethiopian Jews. Ethiopian Jews. And what do you call it? So even till this day, I'm Ethiopian actually, if you don't know, but Ethiopian Jews till this day they want to do Aliyah to Israel, even though they don't accept them because of their skin color. Uh, they want to move, migrate to Israel because why? Uh, they want to like live a better life, uh, have a better life. It's not because what do you call we're go we're going around and punching Ethiopian Ethiopian Jews or like discriminating against them. No, because they want to migrate because they want better opportunity because Israel is a powerful, rich country. That is why it's not because what he called people. There, there is no actually, and also in your point as well, there is no actual proof that everybody in the Middle East was forcing Jews to get out, like get out, get out, get out. No, there's no, there's not, there's none of that either. I mean, it was. I read the history, okay, and again, these bombings are, do not explain the mass migration. There was, they did lose everything. Israel, when it was founded, when the Jews were going there from the Middle East to Israel, they weren't going. They were going there with n nothing. They were settling there in tents. It, they weren't becoming more powerful. They weren't. They weren't getting better lives. They had houses. They had their farms. They had. Well, they had their businesses actually. They. They. The governments of Iraq and many other Islamic countries. They took all their money. They took all their belonging. 
um, and all of this has been very detailed documented and they left against their will. They didn't want to leave. They had their lives there and that, the, that force, that pressure against Jews in these Islamic countries, in these Arab countries, that the, the discrimination and the oppression and the and the pressure against them is the major drive. And this is you could see the newspapers all back then. You we have the uh, evidence of all the threats that the Jews were facing at that time that forced them to come to Israel. And they came to Israel with nothing. And they came to Israel would not have at that time. They didn't have a better life in Israel. They preferred. They wish they could stay in those countries, right? And the, all of this has been documented. There, there are warnings back then in newspapers showing that Jews are in danger. Jews are being attacked. Jews are uh, there's threats yeah, against black them. Black propaganda by the Mossad. Black propaganda by the Mossad. But I tell you, yeah, of course, I'm not. Newspapers of. Uh, what are you talking about? These are newspapers by other countries. What propaganda? Are you saying that the Jews controlled the media of other countries? Oh, uh, like uh, let's not go there, Armin. Come on, that, that's not what I said. That, did I say that? Uh, <laughs> I did not no, say no. That. I'm asking. That's what. No, yeah. that, that's why I'm asking. Like, how could they? How could all of this be propaganda? This is like different countries, different people were reporting on this. Yeah, of course. Look, I'm not saying there was no discrimination in the Middle East against Jews. Okay, but what I'm trying to say okay. is, when when there what do you call it um, Reconquista happened in Spain. Sorry, I didn't uh, mean to. I didn't. I just want to say I would. I did, I, I don't want to accuse you of anything like that. Okay, okay. I was just like right. one. I, that was a question. I don't mean to. M I don't mean to. I want to be. Fr I want to be like. Um, I don't mean to accuse you of anything. Okay, so okay, cool. Got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but what yeah, I'm yeah. trying to say is, when uh, Spain took over uh, the what do you call it, Muslim Spain, Reconquista, and they did the uh, you know those heavy tortures. I forgot what they were called. Uh, of uh, like they were they kicked out the Jews and the Muslims of Spain. Morocco took them in, and so basically, whenever there was like what do you call it, ethnic. It's a long time program, ago. Yeah, yeah, ethnic cleansing programs and stuff like that. The Muslim countries took those uh, the European Jews in, and they kept them safe. And what, even what year are you talking about? You're yeah, talking about many little, years before. Yeah, twelve hundred. Yeah, whatever. You know, twelve hundred, thirteen hundred. Yeah, but that okay. But that's a completely different. Yeah, okay. If you want to go back then, I agree. At that time, Islamic countries were better to Jews, much, much better to Jews than Christian and European countries. Okay, but that's yeah. a we're talking about a completely different time frame right no, now. No, but right? the yeah. part, but that's what I'm saying though. But the the what do you call it? people right now have this narrative that people hate Jews in the Middle East and people have problem with Jews in the Middle East or not even Jews, Israelis actually. People have Israeli problem with the Israelis nowadays because uh, what it called they are Jewish. No, that is not the problem because people. It is. Like, no, 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 no. Because no, no. what it called. The, 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 can I just finish? Let me just finish. Yeah. Sure. The problem right now in the Middle East it is what it called. Uh, Israel is a European colonialist empire in the Middle East because most of those people like what it called that rule Israel right now are European Jews. That uh, what do you call it? that uh, that the and the Zionist as well affair is a European uh, aspect, and they see the people in the region as lesser than lesser than to be ruled as a colonialist state. So this is basically what we have with South, apartheid South Africa and the regions around it. So the the reason what you call it, uh, the like the Middle East and um, like even Iran has not progressed is because of the uh, what do you call it. Of the the deeds of uh, of Israel and America, because they have supported, for example, in um, in Afghanistan, they have supported the Mujahideen against a secular government. In Iran, they've overthrew Mohammad Mossadegh when he did when he when he when he tried to nationalize the oil. So no, all this Mohammad Mossadegh Mohammad Mossadegh was doing a coup d'état against the Shah. The Shah had a completely legal right to remove. Him and the United the States. Shah, the, the, the Shah, but like, but the British went in there. But everybody knows it's not the Shah that did it. The British did it. The British and the Americans did it. But the Shah, the Shah. Okay, so let me say that the Shah had completely legal right to remove Mossadegh. That was within his legal right. It was Mossadegh who was doing the coup. Okay, the Shah had the legal right to elected. remove him. I thought Mossadegh was elected. Everybody said Mossadegh was elected. The yeah, yeah, but Mossadegh was trying to completely remove the parliament and 
maintain get all the power. So the Shah, even though he was elected, the Shah had with, had the constitutional right to remove Mossadegh. That he has this, he had that power, but he didn't have the military backing to do that. So the Americans helped him do what he was legally in the right to do. That's a different story. I I know that I'm from Iran. I know the actual story from what is happening. What happened in Iran? A lot of people saying that the Americans did a coup in Iran. It's no. It was the Americans helped the Shah uh, stop a coup from happening. Actually, but here's another thing. Um, you 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 mentioned that people hate. It's not true that people in the Middle East hate the Jewish people because they're Jews. That yeah, is so wrong. No, it's not because it's not because they're Jewish. No, it is because what do you call it? I heard yeah, you ahead. speak. Can I also I can I also say something? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. It yeah. is. It. I mean, I grew up in Iran. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I used to be Muslim. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It is because they're Jewish. It is it the hatred is because they're Jews. It's it's in our scripture. It's in Islamic scripture. Mm -hmm. The anti-Jewish hatred is is a fundamental part. It's a foundation. It's a fundamental part of Islamic teaching. The hatred mm -hmm. towards Jewish. So I don't know where you're getting this from. The hatred towards Jewish people predates Israel. It's one of the 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 uh, the most foundational um, part of you know, uh, uh, hatred is not just within Islam. Um, it, it is the oldest form of, it's the most, uh, one of the most ancient forms of discrimination against a group of people. The mm -hmm. whole Israel uh, colonial state is just an excuse among many, many, many other reasons why people are, you know, hate Jews. Like, they, they, they these are just excuses for Jewish hatred. Okay, well, I don't know I, where you, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, so uh, how can you explain then what you call it, uh, the war uh, between Israel and all the secularist governments around and the secularist, uh, what do you call it? And then back in 1970s, 60s, early 80s, like uh, in secularist groups. So one of the first women that did uh, what he called suicide bombing against the Israeli army in Lebanon was uh, Sanama Hedley, and she was a Christian and she was part of the Socialist uh, Nationalist Party. So. That's what I'm talking about. Like even secularists fought against Israel. Actually, like, uh, the the first enemy of Israel in the Middle East was secular governments. Whether it was Jabal Abdel Nasser, PLO was secularist, and their yeah. allies were also secularists. Uh, let me finish. Uh, they were they were secularists like yeah, the Red I'm Japanese saying... Army. Okay, uh, the Red Japanese Army, uh, the Red Army big, uh, Red Army faction from Germany, and. Uh, like all the, the countries around it as well, like the Ba'athist Syria, which is also uh, what I call it, a communist, I think, uh, nationalist party, and also uh, Muammar Gaddafi. All these countries mm -hmm. were secularists, and they wanted a secular, what they call it, a secular, uh, what they call Arab nationalistic country. They didn't want to, what they call it, uh, say, oh, you are uh, you are Christian, you are a Jew, you are a Muslim. Like, no, they wanted what they call it, Arab nationalism. After what they call colonialism ended, they wanted to be Arab nationalistic, progressive, uh, in the Middle East, that didn't work out. From Algeria to all the way to I think uh, Iraq, it was like that. That didn't work out, and was replaced by Islamic governments because those countries failed. A lot of those countries, what they call, were coup d'état by the Americans uh, or bribed by the Americans as well. So that is my point. So uh, you, as a secularist, and what a lot of Iranian secularists nowadays, how can they support Israel? Because Israel destroyed the secular states. Uh, Israel and America actually, but uh, destroyed the secular states and made enemy with the secular states. So this is what I don't believe when you say that. Uh, yes, I finish with one minute. Uh, when you say that you know it's because of Islam, because as we have seen here, like even Christians blew themselves up to to fight against the Israelis when they invaded their country. So it's not because you're Jewish. Because yeah, go ahead. Well, I mean, if you paid, I mean, listen to what I've said. I didn't say Jewish hatred exists only because of Islam. Okay. No, but Obviously, you call it Islamic scripture. Of, yes, Islamic scripture, scripture is anti-Jewish mm -hmm. and it contributes to anti-Jewish hatred, but it's not mm -hmm. the sole reason of anti-Jewish hatred. I specifically mm -hmm. said it's one of the most ancient, you know, it's one of the most global uh, hatreds that exists. Um, the, the forms of discrimination exist. Anti-Jewish hatred is global. It's within mm -hmm. Islam and outside of Islam. I mean, you are taking the secular 
people you're mentioning are people who wanted an ethno state with the ethnicity being Arab, right? So they were uh, just because somebody just because I'm secular, I don't mm -hmm. endorse anybody else who's se always secular, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, Saddam was secular. I don't I don't endorse Saddam. He was a, he was a monster, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, you mentioned Abdul Nasser, right? Yeah, these are these were racist people who were who wanted to see value in uh, in in uniting over an ethnicity of being Arab, right? So, and they had anti-Jewish hatred. Their source of anti-Jewish hatred was more Arab superiority over Jewish, the Jewish uh, race, not based on religion, but based on just pure racism against Jews. Um, but, 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 but that doesn't, that doesn't mean that Islam does not have anti-Jewish hatred just because I can f find examples of anti-Jewish hatred doesn't mean uh, th th just because we can find examples of secular anti-Jewish hatred that doesn't mean that we don't have Islamic version. Islamic scripture specifically says Muhammad. Um, do you know the story of Banu Ghareza where Muhammad sp uh, spent a, a day uh, beheading 700 Jews, uh, uh, completely wiping out a Jewish tribe? A Jewish tribe that he had that had surrendered, that he had as captives, that were mm -hmm. not in battle, he mm -hmm. had as captives, and he beheaded the entire all of the men of that tribe, and he sold the women and children of that tribe to slavery and bought weapons with it. That's what yeah. Muhammad. This is an official part of Islamic teaching, and that's mm -hmm. what Muhammad did to the Jews. Did you know that? Did you know that that's part of Islamic teaching? No, I didn't know that, but uh, I mean, uh, what do you call it? Like, you know, you're like you're talking about, like, if something happened like you know, thousands of years ago, like, what do you, what, what, I mean, nope. in the medieval times. But that's a role time, model. Like, yeah, but, yeah. but that's a role. It, it is, but it, yeah, it happened in medieval times, but it is, yeah. it's relevant today because Islam teaches you that Muhammad is a role model for mm -hmm. all Muslims at all mm -hmm. times. At mm -hmm. all, everywhere, and all times. Mm -hmm. So it's not mm -hmm. like just back then. You're supposed to follow Muhammad's way in Islam. Yeah. Well, okay, but look, you know, uh, to to counter that, you know, I can tell you what he called. There's many multi multi ethnic, uh, not multi ethnic, multi religious states, you know, or multi ethnic states like Malaysia, that have Sharia law, and uh, what he called majority yep. Muslim that live what he called peacefully with the other Buddhists. Uh, I don't know what, uh, yeah, Hindu. I don't know, look, you know, the, what he called the, the religious, uh, you know, connotations of Malaysia, but you know, there there's uh, quite a few of them, but they live peacefully. And they leave what he called. So not every what he called just because not every Muslim, you know, what he called literally follows the, the, the Quran yes. and 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 beheads people just for like, you know, for being what he called different religion or whatnot and try to convert them. So, yeah, maybe ISIS does that. But like, that's not what he called. That's not what the more the majority of Muslims yes. I've been around with. They don't do that kind of stuff. So, you know, it is. Uh, yes, 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 yes. The wrong thing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Fire? See, yeah. here, that's a good point. That's a good point. OK, so. The, I say so. The vast majority of Muslims have better moral standards than Islam. Okay, just like the vast majority of Christians have better moral standards than Christianity, and just like the vast majority of Jewish people have better moral standards than Judaism. I mean, in the same way that you say most Muslims don't follow their scriptures, which is good. That's why I say Islam is the problem, but most Muslims ignore most of Islam. You know. Uh, which is good, like because of modernity, because of liberalism, but, most people ignore a lot of their. Stuff. About, but it's not the, because, but no, the same yeah. thing, the same thing is true. The same thing is true with uh, Jewish people, right? So, mm -hmm. I I love Israel, I love Palestine, and I think Palestine and Israel uh, progress faster when they move away from the religious teachings, right? So, mm -hmm. I think uh, Judaism as a religion is a curse for Israel. And Islam as a religion is a curse for Palestine and all other Islamic countries. The good thing mm -hmm. about Israel is that many Jewish people are secular and then don't take their religion very seriously. Mm -hmm. A lot of the problems that we have in Israel right now is because of the religious uh, people in Israel that are that are becoming more and more influential, right? Mm -hmm. But Israel, for example, itself, even though um, it, you know you know it's a country for Jewish people, but it's Jewish based on ethnicity mostly which i we could talk about ethno state and whether that is whether israel is ethnic ethnic or not but within the government within the laws and the rights that of the uh, of israel religion doesn't play um, much of a role um, mm -hmm. that's why 
you know, that's why it's a secular state. That's why it's a liberal country. And that's why I support it, because um, I love and I, I hate Israel's uh, religious aspects, but I also love its secularism. I love its liberalism. I love a lot of the uh, uh, all these other things. I try to see both sides. I said I try to see the goods and bads of every country rather than completely painting it as 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 uh, one thing. Right. So just like um, he, here's the thing. Do uh, you say you, do you are? Anti, I'm assuming you're against Hamas, right? As a as an organization, you're against Hamas. No, I'm not against Hamas as an organization. Why would I be against Hamas as an organization? Maybe I, I support what you call it. our organization supports what you call it, resistance against colonialism. We don't we don't advocate for violence, but we can uh, what you call we can understand that what you call the the Palestinian people to use any form of resistance they have to fight against the occupiers. Because what you call they want freedom. Yes. They're not. Okay, so f first of all, they're not occupiers. It's a legitimate country. It's officially recognized no, as a no, country okay, by no, the United even, no, no. Okay, Second of all, second of all, are you are you not are you not um, you're you are endorsing an organization that kills women, men, and children that are civilians, unarmed civilians? You do not condemn that. How much, what do you call, how, like, how many unarmed civilians have Israeli killed? I mean, we're, what we're talking about here, like, you know, how many, like, what do you call unarmed civilians, how many children that are is in what uh, Israeli, Israeli's prison? I mean, answer my, well, let's answer my question and then we'll get to yours, okay? So that's uh, what about them. That's a fallacy. You're doing what about them, okay? Just, not a, I'm not doing what about them. I'm just, this is like, these are two people committed, what do you call, competing with what do you call, fighting each other. So, what so you costs? think Hamas so, is justified? Hamas is justified in killing so many innocent civilians because the other side does it this as well. No, you I'm think it was justified to kill? No, I'm not saying they're justified. No, I so would you say. condemn? So would you condemn? Would you condemn Hamas killing all those civilians? Yeah, 1400 Hamas, civilians. But, yes, I would not. That all 1400 of them were not civilians. Let's not like, let, let's not get it twisted here. They have, they have been coming out what do you call it uh, unarmed. They are unarmed. They were unarmed. At no, the no, time not all of them. Either way, like, they, what do you mean? Like, there was a Merkaba tank in the picture in the beginning. There was a Merkaba tank blown up. So that that is not unarmed. That's a Merkaba tank, man. There's a Merkaba tank. You seen know, what they call the military outpost, like okay. where they're fighting. Over. We're not talking. There were more than fourteen hundreds of them that were unarmed people. I know there were also armed people that were killed, but let's. I mean, we're playing with words here. So you condemn that. You condemn Hamas's actions on October 7, 2023. You condemn what they did that day. No, uh, what do you call it? The, the military targets were legitimate. The, what do you call it? The, the hostage taking and the, what do you call it? And um, the, the kibbutz, kibbutz, that's what you call them. Yeah, the kibbutz, like uh, uh, invasion of those places and kidnapping and killing people, or innocent people. Yes. And torture, and torturing, and torturing, and raping, and the killing of children all of well, that is, okay so all where, of that uh, okay where, where where do you okay so first of all let, let's uh, um to talk about what uh, happened on october 7th there were myths on october 7th yeah okay so myth number one 40 beheaded babies that's been proven uh, proven a lie i'm not talking about i didn't did i say 40 beheaded babies no, i'm just i'm just i'm just i'm just trying to I'm not, okay i'm not let's let's address what i'm saying i didn't i, I didn't i Here's the thing. I agree yeah. with you. Okay. I don't see any evidence for 40 beheaded babies. That's why I don't, I'm not saying it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't say 40. I didn't see any evidence that 40 babies were beheaded. That's why mm -hmm. I'm not claiming that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I know, okay. I know innocent civilians were killed by mm -hmm. Hamas. That's why that's the part I'm asking about. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that was a terrorist activity? That, do you think that was terrorism that Hamas did back then? The civilians that they killed? Well, yes, uh, but what I'm trying to say, though, like, there are, there's what you call it, uh, there's been propaganda and, uh, you know, Hasbara propaganda. I'm, I'm propaganda. talking about the, I'm, I'm talking about the ones that, the parts that has been verified, okay? I'm okay. not talking about the parts that hasn't been verified. Okay, okay but rape has not been verified, but, ra but rape has not been verified. I haven't seen any evidence of rape. Like, I haven't seen any evidence of okay. rape. Okay. Have you seen evidence of civilians being murdered, okay, by... Hamas on October 7th. Uh, yes, I've seen that. Yeah, yes, I've seen. Civilian. Okay, is that a, is that terrorism? Do you consider that to be terrorism? Yeah, but like, what, what do you call it? But we can go with the semantics of terrorism. What what is terrorism anyway? Terrorism is warfare of the poor. Like, I mean, like everybody, every time, what do you call it? What do you, 
when a, when a small country or a small militia does something, it's terrorism. When, whenever a big country does something, okay. then uh, what do you call it? When is, a it term, is it, do you consider it to be criminal what they did? Uh, what I consider it wrong, yeah. I consider it wrong, yeah. I consider it wrong. I, I okay. consider it morally, morally reprehensible, yeah. So, but okay. that being said though, okay, can I, can I continue? Okay, like, you know, I, I, like, for example, in World War II, I support the United States and uh, Soviet Union, uh, and you know, the allies, you know, Soviet Union, uh, Great Britain, and uh, USA. Yeah? So that doesn't mean I approve every military action they take. So, for example, I believe in their cause, which is defeating Nazism, defeating uh, Imperial Japan, which were uh, great evil, they were trying to, what they call it, uh, you know, dominate the world and uh, destroy anybody who was lesser than them. But I don't. That doesn't mean I approve the tactic of dropping nuclear bombs on Japan. I don't believe. Uh, that doesn't mean I approve uh, any rapes the American so, government, so, uh, any any uh, the American military did, or the the, the bombing of Dresden. Exactly. So I approve of the uh, with the overall strategy, uh, the overall uh, mm -hmm. what you call it, goal, which is freedom of the Palestinian people. However, that doesn't mean I approve every military tactic and every military what you call it, decision that every soldier takes of Hamas. That does the same thing with the United States government when they were fighting against the, the Nazis. That doesn't mean every, you know, you can't just say, oh, like, you know, uh, you support the American but, military and uh, fight against Nazis. But Hamas, approve... yeah, go ahead. But Hamas wants to, Hamas has explicitly mentioned many, many times that their goal is to ki kill Jews everywhere no, in the world. No, that's not what they say. They have said they, 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 everywhere in the I've world. I've heard everywhere, everywhere in the world. That's what they yeah. said. Yes. I've heard them say that. I've heard them. I've heard them. I've heard them. I've heard them teach that to their children. Everywhere in the world. Yeah. yeah I heard them brag. Them. I've heard them brag about killing Jews, not Israelis, but Jews. And even and and while at it, when they want to kill Israelis in Israel, okay, they want to kill everybody. Not just the milit not just the soldiers. They want to kill everybody. They want to wipe every single Jew. Mm -hmm. They want to commit mass genocide. They 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 brag about that. They teach that. I mean, I come from a country where the government funds Hamas. That the okay. By the way, the only reason why we have Hamas as an organization that it is is because of the funding and the support of the country. Of the of the government of the country that I'm a citizen of, which is the Islamic mm -hmm. Republic of Iran, mm -hmm. they themselves make make it very clear what they are trying to do. They teach mm -hmm. us that they're they're mm -hmm. anti-Jewish. I mean, they, I mean, they they, they 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 brag about this. They have hadith about it. They brag mm -hmm. about the day where all the Jews are all the Jews around the world are running away from Muslims because Muslims are slaughtering every single one of them. They have, we have this in Islamic teaching. Well, look, I, yeah, look what you call it. I, I'm, I've heard what you call plenty of uh, what you call it, of uh, Jewish uh, scripture and Jewish, what you call it, propaganda as well about what you call it, about, you know, the Goyim, which is the, which is the, you know, the rest oh, of yes. the world. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, but, yes. Uh, but, but, I, that, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. You, you want me to come? You, here's the thing. I'm an atheist. I'm an anti religion atheist. You know mm -hmm. what? I, can I swear? Yeah. Yeah, Can I swear? May I swear? Yeah, okay. Whatever, fuck. Yeah. I I say I say fuck Islam, but mm -hmm. I also say fuck Judaism. Okay. Mm -hmm. Judaism as a religion is the most racist religion I've seen on, in the world. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I don't love Judaism. Okay? okay. I hate Judaism. I hate Islam. I hate Christianity. I hate Judaism. I love Muslim people. I love Christian people. I love Jewish people. I don't like the ideology. All of it is shit. Okay. Israel, mm -hmm. Israel's weakness is main a lot of Israel's weakness is because of the influence of religion in its politics. Okay. Mm -hmm. But a lot the weakness of Palestine is also because of the influence a lot of it, not all of it. Okay. I don't want to uh, mm. be black and white. A lot of the problems with Palestine is also because of the influence of religion in their politics. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not making excuses for Judaism as a religion. I but, hate yeah. Judaism as a religion. But look, okay, but we're going back to the what they call it uh, in circles again. But I have to point this out again. So when when the Palestinian before what they call it, first of all, uh, 
that Israel actually supported as well Hamas against the secular operatives. They funded Hamas. Not Israel. Yeah. Likud. Okay. I, yes. I don't know if the Likud, but yeah. But the Mossad. The Mossad. Yeah. The Mossad. So, but what I'm trying to say though, but even when, no, when was, uh, what do you call it? Ben, uh, even but when. I, but I don't say Israel. So here's the thing. You when 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 Hamas does a crime, okay. So mm -hmm. here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Netanyahu is a criminal. Mm -hmm. He's a war criminal. He deserves mm -hmm. to spend the rest of his life in jail. Okay. okay. He, yeah, le, the, the Likud party is a fascist party. Okay. They're okay. a far right fascist party that is a curse on Israel, Likud party and Netanyahu. Okay. okay? All right. So, but when I, when, and, and here's the thing, I know, I can find, I know, ex I myself know examples of IDF committing war crimes, right? Mm -hmm. I, and, but I, when I, when IDF commits war crime, I look for, wait for the evidence. I don't just say call it a war crime before because like um, civilians are dying because civilians die in every war. Okay. So if every war that has civilian death was war crime, then every war would be a war crime, right? But every time, I, I wait for the evidence, and if it's proven that IDF has committed the war crime, I condemn it. But I don't say, I don't condemn Israel, I condemn that specific action, I condemn Likud, I condemn Netanyahu, I condemn that specific action by IDF. Just like when we, when you, when we, people condemn Hamas, they don't condemn Palestine, they condemn Hamas. So why not be as charitable the other way around? Okay, mm -hmm. I don't condemn Israel as a whole. There's many things about Israel that is worth celebrating. I mm -hmm. condemn Likud. I condemn Netanyahu. I, I don't generalize it to the entirety of Israel. I try to oh. be more specific. Got yeah. you. But all right. Look, so moving on, though, like uh, what do you call it? So I wanted to talk to you about the founding of Israel and what do you call it? This is the ethnic part I'm talking about. All right. So mm -hmm. it is, if you could check out the guy, uh, Arthur Rupin was a German, uh, what he called Zionist. This was even before what he called uh, Israel was founded. And this is even before World War II uh, happened. But he was what he called, you know, these are people that celebrated what he called European uh, Jews, you know, Ashkenazi Jews, and they looked down upon uh, well, Sephardi and Mizrahi Jews. So, so this is from the beginning. And even now till today, uh, yeah, just Google that name, Arthur Rupin, uh, whenever you have the time. And by the way, Mizrahi, Mizrahi, Jews are, Mizrahi Jews are now around 50% of Israel, correct? Yeah, but like, I'm just what I'm talking about, this is the foundation. Which are from the region, which are from the region, which are from the Middle East. Yeah, I know, but I got you, but, to the, the, but you're native the, to the region. Yeah, I know, but I'm talking about this is the foundation of Zionism. This is the foundation, even this, in its core. Even at its core, yeah. like you know, there was a lot of racist, ethno, what do you call it, uh, pseudo scientific babble racist. about it. It's not racist. Okay, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, it's not racist to protect a group of people who are being discriminated against because of their race. So but, I am. You know, Judaism a race, though. That's the thing, though. Is Judaism a race, though? Judaism, Judaism is three. Judaism, when you use the word Judaism, they're referring to three completely different things. Mm -hmm. Three things that are connected in some ways, but they are different. Okay, mm -hmm. Judaism, and it's unfortunate that they have they're using the same word for these th three different things. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. right? They're talking about a religion, which is made up, and an ethnicity, which is also made up. Okay, and a culture. These are three different things which they all refer to as Judaism, okay? So I, I, the concept of race is, a, I think, is, I, I accept that that, ho that whole uh, race is non-scientific. I mean, technically, the human race is all one race. And the other race, like, was the Neanderthals, which we could, which we, which are dead. So we're all, yeah. I accept. But what I'm trying to say, okay, look, but, but let me just stop you there. But like, what I'm trying to say, though, there's specifically, like, some racist things on here. Because, for example, right? The Ethiopian Jews I was talking about, right? Like in 2012, 2013, it came out that what he called Israel was giving uh, what he called uh, forced sterilization, you know, by tricking the Ethiopian woman to give them sterilization because they didn't want to have more black babies in Israel. The only people that have to jump hoops 
to uh, is Ethiopian Jews to come to Israel to make Aliyah to Israel. Every other what do you call it, you know, European Jews, whatever, come over, come over, come over, you know. So okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Here's the thing: there is racism in Israel. There is racism in Israel. Okay. Mm-hmm. But, but guess what? There's racism in other countries as well. I mean, I condemn the racism in Israel. Of course, there's racism in Israel. Okay, mm-hmm. but there's racism in every country, almost every country. No, right? but like, no, I, but when you come, but like I, you, I, an apart, not every country has an apartheid state in a foreign land. Not Israel, every country Israel, has. Israel is not apartheid. Israel yeah, is not an apartheid it's, state. It's similar to what do you call? There is no like what do you call? It's not just me that said. It. It's the UN, like the certain bodies of the UN said it. Well, human rights lawyers no. said it. It's not like what? Yeah, I've. The Amnesty International is the main one that is saying that. I've looked into it. It's not apartheid, okay? There is racism in Israel, okay? I agree with that, but it's not it's not to the level of apartheid, okay? They because apartheid needs to have you need to have legal discrimination. You have to have based in you have to have two tier citizenship for you to be able to call it apartheid. We don't have two tier citizenship in Israel. The, the people, like what do you call it? Palestine does not exist. That is under occupation by by Israel. Like that, that what do you call it? The, the land that even the UN cut out for Palestine, that is under your uh, what do you call it? Military occupation of uh, of Israel. Where is the West Bank? That is under military occupation. Like what do you call it? That's those are not what do you call it? people of their own say, country. Those are not people who are free to do their own will. Okay. Those are under your uh, what do you call it? Uh, Israeli government control. And like, whether it's their water, their food, like uh, any commerce they do, if they want to travel abroad, everything has to do, like what you call uh, the, uh, the Israeli government has to approve on it. And, uh, yeah. they, and to like what, uh, what they call, they're stuck there. And like, what they call, they're treated like dogs day in and day out. So like, I mean, wh- what kind of life is that? And what it calls, if uh, an Israeli, like what they call settler. You're talking about Gaza. You're part, okay, you're specifically talking about Gaza, not the bad. You're not talking. Okay, so no West Bank, West what, Bank as well, West Bank as well. I'm not specifically talking about Gaza. I'm talking about West Bank as well. I mean, we have to took what they call the, those. The I mean, West Bank is not separate than Gaza in the situation of Palestine. When we're talking about the, the the question of Palestine, West Bank is also uh, we have what they call to be more organized. We have to be more organized about in the way we're talking about this. Okay, so. If you're talking about apartheid, we're talking about two-tier citizen. This is what apartheid is: a two-tier citizenship based on ethnicity. That's what apartheid means. Okay. okay so so about West Bank. Yeah. Okay. So we have three group, three Arab, three groups of Arabs here that we can evaluate them separately, right? We have Arabs in the in Gaza Strip. We have Arabs in Israel who are citizens of Israel, right? Mm-hmm. And then we have Arabs in the West Bank. Right. Yeah. So and, and also I completely acknowledge that the situation is horrible, especially for Arabs in Gaza. Okay. But but if we're using terms like ethno state, horrible situation that needs to be resolved does not mean that we could call it ethno state because these are very specific words that we're using here, right? So mm-hmm. you're talking which you want to evaluate which one? You want to evaluate West Bank? Okay, so here's the thing. The Arab, the the Palestinians in West Bank, okay, they're not citizens of Israel. Mm-hmm. So if they're not citizens of Israel, how could you call it apartheid when there is no two-tier citizenship? They're sit they're they're you know they they, they but what the you call but that, that land is owned by Israel. Like so basically, like what do you call it? That land is controlled by Israel. It's under occupation. Yeah. So basically they are citizens of Israel. I mean, what do you call it? the P uh, the the, the, the Palestinian Authority? Their lands, which lands? We have the A and B, the, the West Bank is segmented into different lands, yeah, right? But, we yeah, have but it shouldn't be segmented. Zone. Yeah, well, but it should all have been all of it should be under Palestinian rule, but it's not though. All, but all of right? it is under what do you call it? Uh uh, Israeli you know what? Because, yeah. Yes, I agree with you. Okay, I agree with you. The West Bank. Okay, the settlements. I I condemn. See, I give in to international laws, right? I condemn the settlements in the West Bank. Okay, I call that a, a criminal based on international laws, right? So, in the same international laws that I give in to to recognize Israel as a nation state, okay? The same international laws says to me that the settlements in the West Bank are a crime. So I don't I don't pick 
international laws when it when it suits me and then not use them in another way. Like so yeah. I, I support Israel as a country and the fact that it has the right to defend itself because it is within the international yeah. but it is within oh, okay Armin, given to Armin. Armin. So we're but, 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 but yeah. oh but so so I but here's the thing okay let me just keep make it short okay mm -hmm. so I condemn that as a uh, Israel settlements in the West Bank as a crime I don't call it apartheid it's a different crime okay so just because it's a crime, it doesn't mean that it fits under apartheid. I, just because not calling it apartheid doesn't mean I'm okay with it. It's, it is a crime. But mm -hmm. given that they're not citizens of Israel, I don't call it apartheid. It's a different crime. But I do sh I do share your view that it, is, yeah. it needs to be condemned. Okay. But yeah, even with the Arab living in Israel, though, we have what you call it, uh, weird laws. Like, you know, you can't buy certain things certain places. Uh, you have no. to ask what, it, yeah, you can't buy what you call houses in certain areas. You can't buy houses in certain Israeli areas. Israeli Arabs? Yeah, you can't buy houses in certain areas, yeah. Not true. Yeah, yeah, true. Not true. And what, you, okay. you, you not, based on, not based on law. No, I, I have. Not according to the law. I think what you're referring to is some Israelis being racist to Arabs and making life difficult for Arabs. I acknowledge that that exists, okay? No, and they no, might no, even do the law. But check it, but check okay, it but out. That's though. racist. That's not yeah. apartheid. That's racism. That's just racism. Apartheid is racism. Like, what do you mean? I, but that's but yeah. But look, that's, no, it's a, it's no a, that's, apartheid. Apartheid is a specific kind of racism. Apartheid is two-tier citizenship within the law. Okay. okay. If you're just all talking right. about everyday racism, right, we have that in every finish. country. According right, to the law. According to the law. According to the law, Arabs in Israel actually have more rights than the Jews in Israel. According to the Can law. Can I just finish? All right. Can I just finish? Yeah. I got you. All right. I mean, uh, so. There's also the situation I've seen, what do you call it? Uh, this would happen a long time ago. This is an Arab guy, right? So he slept with this uh, Jewish Israeli girl. And, but, you know, he didn't portray himself as an Arab. I know it's a scummy thing to do, yeah? It's a scummy thing to do. He portrayed himself as a Jew. You know, he spoke Hebrew to her and et cetera. And then he slept with her. When, he, when she found out he was an Arab, she took him to court. And what do you call it? And they charged him with rape through deception. And uh, what do you call it? And Muslims cannot marry uh, Jews as well. So like they're making these laws as well. So you, as a as an Arab Muslim or an Arab Christian, you cannot marry a Jewish uh, girl or a Jewish man. So there are all these laws. Like the, the, is not racist. So for example, for example, like, you know, like so with the with the rape to reception, is not racist for the government to take that? Like what do you call it? I know the guy. What the guy did was wrong and morally reprehensible. You know to lie about uh, what do you call who you are, whatever. But at the end of the day, as a go as a government, you cannot take somebody to court and put them in jail for selling them. Oh, you know, uh, for lying to a woman. You know, so go ahead. Okay. You if if you, I need to double check these stories, but let's mm -hmm. say they're true. Okay. I I am more than happy to condemn <clears throat> specific racist examples of racism here and there. Okay. What you're giving me uh, seems to be anecdotes, right? But what I'm talking about is a broader observation of what I'm seeing in Israel. The Arabs in Israel, Arab citizens of Israel, enjoy more rights and freedoms than Arabs in any other Arab country. That is are better better propaganda. How's better propaganda? Like, that, I, like, I, that, I that is, that. I, you have, you that is to, completely true. That is completely true. You, as an Arab, you are better off being an Israeli Arab than an Arab of any other Arab country. Really? Muslim? Yes. You'd yes. rather be what than 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 being what you call a uh, uh, born of Dubai or born of Qatar, where they give you a hundred thousand dollars just for being born. I don't think so, my guy. I don't think what he called you can put any price on dignity and what he called to raising your what he called uh, raising your what he called your neck up high and walking the streets while now nobody's yelling at you I'm like talking about having... I'm talking about rights and freedoms. I'm not yeah, talking about like examples of you have more rights and freedoms than, and what he called that is ridiculous. That is uh, what he called that is uh, that is uh, specifically a Hasbara propaganda. But anyway, but okay, but moving on though. The, the counter, uh, the counter examples that you gave me 
even mm. if I give into, even if I accept that, which I don't, okay, mm. but it doesn't contradict what I said. I'm talking about, you're talking about dignity. Well, we could talk about what that means. And what Arab, I know plenty of Arabs in Israel that are proud Israelis. I know many Arabs in Israel, citizens Arab of Israel, that will give their life to defend their country that are, that is Israel. I went, I went to Israel. I've talked to Arabs in Israel. I'm not saying mm. all Arabs in Israel are happy with Israel and don't complain about Israel. There are many of them who hate Israel, Arabs are Arab Israelis. But I've talked to plenty of Arab Israelis that they say they would not give up their citizenship of Israel with any other country. And they will bleed for this country and they will defend it with their lives. I've spoken to them. I know that. I know they exist. There are plenty okay. of them. All right. All right. Look, I mean, I, like, I give you that. I like what you call it. I would think they're brainwashed. But like, let's move on, though. Uh, next question is, what is the solution? So here's my solution for the current problem. Okay. Mm. My solution, I think, what it called, we have tried all the time condemning Hamas, condemning the Palestinians, uh, what it called, doing military missions in, uh, in Gaza Strip, uh, doing American doing military missions over there. Iran is the problem. You have to invade Iran, da 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 da. So we have. Look, no, what wait, I invade, never said that. I know, I'm talking about the, you know, the, the general public, you know, oh. like the, the, uh, what you call the war hawks in America, etc. Like, so, like, the problem is with Iran, we have to invade Iran right now. No. So my solution is we have condemned the, the natives of that land and the, what they call the Muslim population of that land and just I did. Or for the for a long time. But but like, I'm just talking about not like you specifically. I'm talking about like the, okay. the, the wider sorry, West. Sorry. Yeah, the wider West. Okay. Like, like uh, have done that. That's been the policy. But my policy is right now is number one, for things to work out, stop giving three hundred uh, what they call three billion a year uh, of aid to Israel. That needs to stop completely. No more weapons to Israel until they sign a peace accord and give back uh, what he called settlements, uh, take back the settlements and uh, give back uh, what he called uh, uh, the land that they've taken from the Palestinians and something gets settled. So sanctions, no $3 billion or no more weapons to Israel. That is my what he called solution right now. Go. Okay, so I think that when it comes to weapons, if they're defense focused, I think that should continue because that actually saved Palestinian lives, right? The less Israelis die, the less Palestinians die. So I do want Israel to have the weapons to defense weapons to be able to defend itself. I do agree that. So here's the things that I think. Let me let me give you the parts of solutions which I think you would agree with. Okay. Okay. So I think I think that I think the Israeli people need to get rid of Likud, get rid of Netanyahu, okay, uh, bring a secular liberal government that immediately uh, forces all the settlements to not only continue, forces all the Israelis in the West Bank out of the West Bank, completely bring bring them all back to Israel. Um, and then all this, all the buildings that they built in the West Bank, they should be all used to offer Palestinians in Gaza to move to the West Bank if they wish to. All those buildings that Israel has built in the West Bank should be offered to the people in Gaza, right? For them to be able to, because Gaza situation is like so dense, population is worked in. So I think they have they have plenty of room there to move people there, and I think that doing that. Israel will signal a huge, uh, this will, by the way, this is pie in the sky uh, dreaming that will not happen. But I'm just saying you, if it was up to me, yeah. this is what would happen, right? Um, this would show a major show of uh, uh, goodwill and good faith that Israel is committed to the two-state solution for Palestine, right, by doing that. Mm -hmm. um, by doing that, the uh, Gulf Arab, uh, the... Arab countries around the Persian Gulf, they will have no more excuses. I mean, they themselves want a normalized relationship with Israel. And the only thing, the Palestinian situation is the only reason why it's the uh, reason why they can't do so, because they have their own population to satisfy when it comes to normalizing ties completely, with, especially Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is desperate to normalize relationship with Israel, but the Palestinian situation is not letting them go 100% uh, with that. But th by Israel doing this, it will be able to uh, significantly increase its ties with other Arab countries in the region and will make Israel 
uh, be more united against the Islamic Republic of Iran and become a much more force and be able to defend itself. This will improve the lives of Israelis and improve the lives of Palestinians, and it will also help significantly reduce the influence of the Islamic, Rep uh, the Islamic Republic of Iran in the region. Sure. Got you, but what do you call it? Uh, what I want to talk about though, so we can't, what do you call it, control the Israelis or what they do, right? That's uh, But as foreigners though, um, you know, as uh, both people living us in the West, uh, that I would hope like the West, like the part, I think one of the main reasons, like, you know, the, this fighting has continued on, there's not have been any peace, is because of the support of the American government. They never, what do you call it, uh, Ch chastise Israel. They never, what he called, try to, what he called, uh, force the Israelis for peace. And they always have their back and, what he called, and uh, take care of their enemies and always give them weapons. And they say, oh, you can, it's like, this is the child that can never do wrong. It's like, you know, and uh, it's a very spoiled child that can never do wrong. That has, I mean, what he called, the United States yeah. constantly pressures Israel, constantly pressures Israel. I mean, the United States can't do everything. I mean, just because they're a superpower doesn't it mean... It has that. never, look, there has never been a time, like what you call, APEC is one of the biggest lobbies in America, and there has never been a time where people said, hey, there's $3 billion, we have to take them back. Never been. Every, like that, like, I mean, every year, I mean, it's what you call, every is a nuclear armed country, but every year it gets $3 billion, man. That 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 saves Palestinian lives, by the way. Okay, for, for, here let me uh, let me down, tell you down. every right. Right. every right. single every single U.S. president, except I think maybe Donald Trump, has condemned the West settlements in the West Bank. Right? Every single one of these uh, administrations has constantly tried to pressure. Israel into giving into the two-state solution and the Likud party and Netanyahu has just not given in into any of that okay but there's there's very little United States can do but they have tried their take best out, take out the three billion take off the three billion take, like that's number one billion, no more weapons the three billions no more weapons and why no, would that help that will hard that will be horrible for the policy okay let me tell you okay if the weapons that Israel has to defend itself if you take that and if Hamas attacks next time and there's no Iron Dome and many Israelis die, do you know how many Palestinians will die in response to an attack like that? So every time, every time a missile is into a Hamas missile or a Hezbollah missile is intercepted by the Iron Dome, it's not just saving Israeli lives, it's saving Palestinians' lives as well, yeah. because every time I, Israelis I die, I don't, look, what they, call, I don't, look what they call it. But the, the Israelis have called what they call Palestinians human animals. So I mean, like how the, the, and these are the defense ministers calling them human animals yeah. and other what they call words. Well, so he, to begin with, I don't say, think okay. First of all, it, first of all, I kind of. First of all, be careful how what you say because he was talking. He wasn't. He didn't call all Palestinians that. Yes, he even did. He though said we are I, dealing with no. He said we are dealing with human animals. And we're going to treat he was talking about way. Hamas. He was he, talking he about Hamas, maybe. He didn't, he didn't specifically yes. say Hamas. He didn't specifically exactly. say Hamas. Exactly. 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 That's why I condemn it. That's why I condemn what he said. But he yeah. didn't also say, he also didn't say all Palestinians. Okay. So the reason why I condemn it is that he used a language that could be mean, like, who are you talking about? Are you talking about Hamas? Or are you talking about all Palestinians? Okay, but I don't go around and say that, oh, he said that about Palestinians because he didn't clarify what he means. And because of lack of clarifications, I condemn it. I, 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 but we I even have a U.S. senator. Not... Yeah, but we even have a U.S. senator that says, uh, but, what do you call it? All Palestinians are Arab Nazis. So I'm just saying that, you know, the, like, yeah, they, fuck they don't him. You know what? Here's the thing fuck him. Fuck him. Fuck him. It's, but here's the thing. I don't, we have good politicians. And bad politicians. I don't just like we have Hamas and we have mm -hmm. here. I, 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 I myself had a show showing people how so many people in Gaza do not support Hamas because I don't want people to uh, generalize Hamas to all Palestinians. OK, mm -hmm. so I want to be specific. So when when we are hating on Hamas, I, I want to make sure that I'm not 
I'm not contributing to people hating Palestinians, okay? But I want people to be charitable on the other side as well. I want people to, when they see crimes, when they see fascists in Israel, okay, mm -hmm. they are fascists in Israel, just like we have fascists in America, just we have like fascists in Iran, just like we have fascists in Ireland and every other country, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't want people to like, oh my God, a, a fascist Israeli. Yeah, that's this example of a fascist in Israel. I don't want to generalize that to the entirety of the country of Israel. Of okay, so okay, but, uh, there. all right. So look, here's what you call we are in a, like this is the disagreement. So I, I have to agree with you. You have fascism, but I think what it calls fascism is in the core of Israel. Fascism and racism and Zionism, because Zionism it is certain thing that fascist. So and number two, the biggest no. problem is that what it calls I look what it called the biggest problem is I don't think Vladimir from uh, what it calls from uh, Russia, Yevgenovich from Ukraine, Dreyfus from France. Or Rothschild and Guggenheim from uh, UK and Switzerland, all of these people. This is not even Semitic names, for example. These are not, and these are not. The, and and to say these people are the, the Jews from three thousand years ago that left Palestine or Israel, and these are the inheritors of that kingdom. It is flat out wrong. It is what they call it. It is yeah. messianic. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I, I don't care about all that religious mumbo jumbo, okay? That is pure nonsense, okay? But, but that, that is the basis of Israel, though. That is the basis of Israel. No. The basis of Israel. No, 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 no. The founders, the founders of Israel, the Zionist, the, 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 Zionist, the Zionist movement was a secular movement. Yeah, Do you know which that? Is also racist as well. Like they said, like what you call, I, I told you about okay. Arthur Rupin, yeah? But Nashville, it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't. It, no, it was not racist. Okay, it was a it was a response to racism. The Zionist movement was a response to racism against Jewish people. It was not racist itself. Okay, if you have if you have people targeting a race for discrimination, if you respond to that, if you have to take that ethnicity seriously, not because that ethnicity is superior in any way but because people are targeting that ethnicity that is not mm -hmm. racism mm -hmm. that is not racism here's the for, for example if i create an institution in the united states okay mm -hmm. that is trying to protect black people against racism mm -hmm. would my institution be racist because it's focusing on black on the black ethnicity it's not mm -hmm. My mm -hmm. institution is not racist. I know my institution is focusing on an ethnicity, but it by itself is not racist. It's responding to, an, to a discrimination. It's trying to protect. So Zionism as a movement was a response to a global targeting of European, Jewish people. European, European, but yeah, and that's not global, but yeah, European, European programs, yeah, European programs. Well, it was global. You just like they, they were receiving um, Mizrahi Jews from the Middle East as well. It wasn't just. It wasn't just. No, I mean, like, well, Zionism is a European thing. So basically, like two, two, uh, two Yeah, but uh, it was Zionism. It the Zionism movement was welcoming Jews to Israel, both Ashkenazis no, but, and Mizrahi no, and other them, Jews from the Middle East, from the Middle East and North Africa as well. It wasn't just just because the founders were European doesn't mean the yeah, movement but, like, was the, European. The founders, were, the, the founders that created it, they were European. And they found it because of the discrimination oh. they faced in Europe. And the two things... And well, everywhere like, else. Was, yeah, no, but like, can I say, though, but like, there was another movement at the same time that competed with Zionism, and that was the Bund. The Bund tried to create a state of, uh, what do you call it, of Israel in Europe. And they tried to, what do you call it, uh, assimilate and try to find peace with the European brethren. So the Bund was specifically said, we are Europeans, and we want to stay in Europe, yes. and we want to live in Europe. They, they didn't want out because, of course, you know, of the of the hatred and actually what the Nazism came in, et cetera. Like, and uh, they were, they were which able prove, to. Uh, which proves Zionism had a point, which proves Zionism to be a legitimate movement. No, but like, le it's legitimacy saying that oh, like, these are the Jews that what they call that, uh, that, that left their land. But are they the Jews that left 3000 years ago from uh, from Israel? The, no, there, there's fuck a 3000 years Fuck three. That's religious. That's what they jumbo. say. That, I don't that's care. what they say. That's what. No, they, that's their beef no, to the land. They're they saying say. we that's, believe. That's not what they said. That's, that's not what, what they said. Say. They say okay. we are the inheritors of the Jewish is... kingdom of Solomon. No. Okay. That, okay. That. Okay. That's not what originally they said. That's why they were looking into Uganda and everywhere else to to start Israel. But, they weren't just looking how, at this. That's what Israelis and Zionists say today. That we are inheritors of the kingdom of Solomon. 
three thousand years ago. I said, how the fuck not, you prove? No, okay, you're generalizing. Yeah. You're generalizing. Not all Zionists say that. Okay, the religious Zionists say that. Okay. <laughs> And there are religious Jews that are against Zionism because they think that they should go back to the land with, when, G, when the Messiah comes, okay? So mm -hmm. we have, here's the thing, we have atheist Zionists, we have secular liberal Zionists, we have religious Zionists, and we have religious Jews against Zionism, right? So what unites Zionists is the fact that they believe that this 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 land should be a place where Jews can feel safe. OK, so the religious Zionists, their justification for why this should be a country. Yeah, that's fucking bullshit. I agree with you. Who cares who was here 3000 years ago? OK, if that was any argument, then United States shouldn't be a country. Australia shouldn't even be a country. Canada shouldn't be a country. They should all go back to Europe and give it all to the natives. That makes no sense. OK, but there are all. But that's not the entire. But that's not the um, common char characteristics of what makes what defines Zionism. Right. Because I, I went to Israel. I talked to many atheist Zionism, Zionists mm -hmm. who don't make that argument for Zionism. Right. Okay. The argument for Zionism, Zionism is just the belief that this land should be a place where Jews can call their country. OK. Mm -hmm. And some of them has have ridiculous religious reasons that you mentioned that I agree is fucking bullshit. But some mm -hmm. of them have good reasons. Some of them are like the world, the world, there, there is anti-Jewish hatred everywhere mm -hmm. in the world. We mm -hmm. cannot rely on world powers to always be on our side. Yeah. We need to have a place where there's a where there's a nation state that has an army where Jews can come to and feel safe and protected. That is the part of Zionism. Those are Zionists, which I agree mm -hmm. with. Not the religious Zionists, but the secular and atheist Zionists. That's the argument I agree with. And that is mm -hmm. not racism. That's that's just a response to racism. Mm -hmm. All right. So, all right. Moving from this, uh, we're, so let's talk about. Let's finish up with uh, Iran. Uh, okay. As a secular. Iranian, By the way, thank you. This has been this has been a very good discussion. I hope I haven't been um, insulting or impolite. No, 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 I, I hope got like, you. I got uh, you. Yeah, 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 no, it's been okay. good. Okay. It's been good. And uh, at least you know okay. uh, what it got. We are both agree that you know there's fascism, but I just believe that there's fascism inherently in it. You don't believe they're just like certain people are just fascists, and once they get rid of, uh, they'll be fine. But uh, um, going back to uh, what you call it, Iran, uh, as a secular Iranian, and I uh, know there's a lot of quite a few like what you call it in your organization as well. So what is your hope in the future? Do you think that uh, America and Israel would save uh, the Iran and uh, the Iranians and uh, give them a secular state? Is that your belief? No, OK, so the only people that could give Iranians a secular state are the Iranian people. OK, mm -hmm. um, th this is not something that needs to be gifted to Iranian people from outside. Mm -hmm. uh, we do. I do believe that support will be helpful and much appreciated, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, not in the form of an invasion or anything like that. That's not what I'm talking about. Right. But just because um, there's no successful revolution. I mean, there's at least not that I know of. There's very little successful revolution without support from outside, without the support from um, other other nations and other powers, right? So, mm -hmm. but at the, at the very end, this comes to the Iranian people deciding their own, des making decisions for their own destiny and bring toppling their the Islamic Republic themselves, right? This is their their country, their choice, their movement. Um, but we do need help. I think we do need. Um, yeah, but but, okay. the, yeah, but that's, support, seen, yeah. that's not that's not just United States and Israel. We're talking about support from every every the, this not just the, and as to, I'm not talking about just governments. We're talking about mm -hmm. governments and people of every country. Anybody okay. that could help. Anybody that anybody that values secularism, freedom, democracy, mm -hmm. liberalism. We any support that we could get, we're not going to say no. We're not going to say no to any support from anywhere that we could get. OK, but uh, uh, what it calls from the track records of America in Iraq, uh, Afghanistan, uh, Syria, uh, Libya. Uh, I don't think what it calls any of those places with the help of America, with uh, what is overthrowing governments have um, have been burgeoning the progressive 
Uh, what about Germany? What, what, place, but... what about Serbia? What about the infl- help with the... Those are European countries, man. Like, that's what I'm saying. You're not European, so you're Middle Eastern. So we're, we're, we're looking at how, how European, how what do you call it, America treats European countries and how they treat Middle Eastern countries. So you're in the, look what it calls, you're in the league with Afghanistan. Like, let me just finish. You're in the league of Afghanistan, Syria, Iraq, Libya. They have treated those countries differently than they treat their European brethren. And they will treat you the same way as they will treat the, the Middle Eastern brethren, which is yours. So you're not European. Go ahead. First of all, I mentioned Japan as well, right? First of all, well, this is they, not... They're, they're not in Middle Eastern either, though. But yeah, go ahead. I know, but you, 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 this is what you're talking about. I think it's a, I don't want to say this. It's a bit maybe unintentionally racist, okay? No, uh, no, it is, no, it is racist as in part what you call it. It isn't racist as I see what you call it, the, how the United States government, there's a racist aspect of what you call it, of their imperialism. Like, so like they see what you call it, how they treat Europe white people is different, how they treat Middle Eastern people. And that is what you call it in their part. And that's what I see it as well. Like, you know, so they treat people differently as well. And they treat people like, and that's also what you call real politics and geopolitics as well. But yeah, go ahead. May answer. Okay. A lot of the problems in the Middle East, I think you seeing it. You you speak in black and whites. You speak in absolutes, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, speak about Israel and America and what they have done as, and Europe, as if they are, as if they're all in you to speak in general terms, as if they're all unanimous in their policy. Mm-hmm. United States. Europe, Israel, did there's conflict in strategies and what is the right thing to do. The United States is the country that at some point was um, against Israel and, and, and threatened it with sanctions over what it did with the Suez Canal, right? The United States was a country that was um, considered what England, France, and Israel did in, in Suez Canal to be imperialist, and it was an anti-imperialist force, right? Uh-huh. And within, Israel, within the United States, we have many different politicians with many different motives, sometimes completely contradict with each other. Same mm-hmm. in, in Israel. Mm-hmm. You look in the United States and Israel, and you try to paint the whole thing with the same brush. I also think but that... What do you think make, what you call make, would it make what you call save, them saving? Okay, good. Yeah. But answer yeah. the question, though. Yeah. Yes, in the Middle East also, the problems that you see in the Middle East is not all because of Western powers, right? Mm -hmm. I think this is what people refer to as the bigotry of lower expectation. A lot of the problems in the Middle East, in the Middle East countries, is because of ideas and culture and methodology that is inferior, that is not working. A lot of the problems in the, in the Middle East, the source of it mm-hmm. is the Middle East itself. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not coming from the United States. It's not coming from imperialism and shit like but that. But do you think they, America has been trying to help people or by what you call by funding terrorists like Jabhat al-Nusra in Syria? Both uh, what you call Israel and America has funded Jabhat al-Nusra in Syria. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, funding uh, the Mujahideen in Afghanistan. Funding, uh, I don't know, uh, whatever other, like uh, Mujahideen i Khalq, that's in from uh, what they call it. Those are also like, you know, it's in the name, Mujahideen i Khalq, and, uh, and they're in Albania, but they're, they're, they're going to, yeah. MEK, right. you're talking about the MEK, which, MEK, which is a terrorist group. Yeah, I know who you're referring but to. They're supported been... by USA, and uh, they're supported by the USA, yeah. And uh, they're, they're funded to, to overthrow the Iranian regime. Well, I mean, there is, they're not funded by the okay so they're they're funded by saudi arabia they're supported by some american politicians so that's what we that's what we know so far the mek is supported mostly by saudi arabia not by the united states there, we have certain politicians in the united states who get paid money by the mek and go do speeches there and that's the other level of support but this is what i'm talking about you talk about the united states as if the united states has ev- you can judge United States as if it's one entity that does one thing. I tr- when I judge, rather than judging an entire country, I try to judge specific actions separately. Oh, but, 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 but we've seen all the specific actions. So we've seen, okay, like we've seen what happened in Iraq when they tried to bring liberal democracy there. We've seen what happened in Libya and their democracy. Right? That place is a mess right now with uh, what do you call it? With foreign powers, with France, Russia. All of them in Turkey vying for what it called, you know, like being like vultures vying for power over there. 
So I'm really what would make what would make Iran different than what happened in Libya, I, Syria, I'm and other? Just getting there. I would. I was. I'm. I'm moving in that direction. But please okay, get but there, though, because. I, no, but the reason why we're not getting there is because you keep adding small little things about MEK and Mujahideen, and then I need to respond to those, and that's why I'm not getting there. But if you let me finish, I'm getting to the, to the difference. Okay, right. So. I think what sets what sets these countries apart are the people, right? Mm -hmm. So the United States tried when after World War II, United States and other Western powers tried to help Germany, and Germany managed to become the most powerful uh, country in Europe, the the largest it's economy the of powerful. Europe. It's it's same, economically probably, but yeah, it's yeah. not the most powerful. I don't think economically. no, I think Great Britain is most uh, economically too, but it, it is one of the no, top no, no. ones. There, Germany is number one in Europe and United States also after World War II helped Japan and Japan became a, a, the, the third largest economy in the world right now and for a very long time the second right mm -hmm. United States and NATO helped stop a genocide um, you know in, in Serbia and mm -hmm. they successfully stopped the genocide so they're there it's a mixed result right so they, they did do that they stopped the genocide there are other places that they and, and you you mentioned that the Middle East they, they did a lot of blunders, which I agree with. But it wasn't just the Middle East. The United States did blunders in Cambodia, right? A lot of people don't mention the war crimes that the United States committed in Cambodia. That was a disaster over there, right? So we have good examples and we have bad examples. What makes Japan and Germany um, different from Iraq and Afghanistan? I think it's. It's the culture of the people, right? Mm -hmm. And it's the desire for liberalism mm. and enlightenment values. And I think what sets them apart is that it's hard to do it's nation building in countries where the people themselves have very little desire to move towards liberalism. That mm -hmm. is very difficult to do. The difference mm -hmm. is that Iran has a large population of people. The vast majority of the people in Iran, including even Muslims in Iran, want secularism. They want human rights, they want liberalism, and they want a secular democracy. And that's why it's not we don't I don't I don't I don't have hopes for United States or Israel or Europe to come build Iran. Okay? We don't need that. I'm not asking for that. Once we get rid of the Islamic Republic. The Iranian people will do that themselves. I think you're trying to get me to say like, oh, Big Daddy America, come save us. Come save us. I mean, that's, what like I, that's, what, that's what some Iranian people are saying. Like, I mean, like, I, like on TV. I'm not, saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that we appreciate support. But at the end of the day, when the Iranian people get rid of, get rid of the Islamic Republic, mm -hmm. the nation building will be done by the very people who have the exact values and methodology mm -hmm. and and culture that other other countries who have succeeded um, so uh, managed to uh, build their countries. So what I'm saying is that the Iranian people have the tools, have the have the values that mm -hmm. makes country great. Other okay. countries look at if you look at the share characteristics of countries that managed to go from absolute bankruptcy to becoming world powers right those are the values that we now see present in iran unfortunately mm -hmm. we don't see that right now in afghanistan unfortunately we don't see that right now in many other countries in the middle east but we do see that in iran and that's why all all we need to do is get rid of the islamic republic okay got you so but uh, i want to counter that and uh what do you call saying because like it doesn't matter what you call it, uh, the the culture or the, the what you call it, the will of the people of uh, Iran. Like you know, they are secularists. They have dreams of uh, of progress. They have dreams of becoming like you know, a European or a Japanese like you know, country. The point is, is geopolitics number one, and number two, it is real politics. Geopolitically speaking, uh, Turkey. It is very important to America. Number one, because it's, uh, it straddles, what do you call it, uh, Europe and Asia, uh, Europe and the Middle East. It has what do you call it, uh, many, what do you call it, uh, sea, the sea, uh, sea areas, open where is, uh, I think it's the Caspian Sea or the Mediterranean Sea and et cetera. And it has one of the most, uh, 
what do you call it, uh, uh, military in NATO. So Turkey is important, uh, despite how much crazy shit Erdogan does. I mean, like, yeah, he's crazy, man. Like, I mean, like, they beat up what they call protest- protesters in Washington, D.C. <laughs> they, didn't say, they didn't kick out the, what they call the, the Turkish ambassador or anything like that. But... Another, another crazy thing he did was to say that Hamas are freedom fighters. That's another crazy thing Erdogan All right. did. All right. But yeah, so the, the, despite all the crazy shit he does, you know, Erdogan is very important to them. So they're not going to, or and I, just Turkey, I just say not Erdogan, but yeah, Turkey is very important to geopolitically speaking, real politically speaking, it is important. So they support them. Saudi Arabia is another important ally to, not as important as Turkey, but it's a very important ally because of yeah, the really? oil, of course, yeah, and other things as well. The thing that, about Iranians, though, they're not as important, despite what they call the, the what they call it, the, the philosophy and the dreams of the, the, the Iranian youths and like what they call it, and their aspirations, whatever that may be. You know, those things don't matter in militarily, politically speaking matters. And politically speaking, uh, geopolitically, I- Iran is nowhere close to Europe or anywhere strategically positioned for America to want it that bad. Uh, want it that re- bad, re- first of all, First of all, the, Iran is not for the taking of the United States. I don't understand what you're talking about. And second of all, Iran is important not to just the United States, but the whole world. Uh, the most important econ- uh, economic corridors uh, would have went through Iran and connected India and China with Europe. It was, it was supposed day. to... Not that, the Silk Road doesn't no. exist anymore. That's back in the let day, me, man. That, let, that... let me... Sp- let me speak, okay? okay. If geopolitically, most economic corridors that connects east and west, m- m- it would make sense geopolitically. Would have made sense for it to go to true Iran, okay? The Iran Iran is next to it controls basically the uh, the Hormuz Canal, which is more than twenty percent of the source of energy of the entire planet goes through there. So I don't know what you're talking about, right? Um, Iran has a very young population eager for entrepreneurship and economic growth with a liberal and secular mindset. And more than natural, so more than more, even though Iran has a lot of oil and gas, which is very important to uh, world politics, what it has that is even more valuable is the young population of people with the right mindset with the right both economic mindset and and with the right values that mm-hmm. are the, the more important as an asset to any country. If you look at what makes a country great is not its natural resources. It's the people of the country and the amount of investment that you make in their people that makes a country great. And every t- and the people of Iran and our, our natural allies, if, if Iran becomes a liberal democracy, mm-hmm. Iranian people be a natural allies to other liberal democracy and that okay. would be a great asset in a in a, in a in a in a place let me i didn't finish you were you, i let you go for a while in the okay. middle east that is now a major source of the de- uh, instability for the world right for the world at large having iran becoming a liberal democracy will solve most of the world's problem it will draw it will it will it would be a leap forward when it comes to making the world a more peaceful and stable place. If you look at all of the major conflicts in the world, a major part of them are right now being supported and caused by the Islamic Republic. If Iran becomes a liberal democracy, not only we would not have the Islamic Republic causing all this instability around the world, we would have a major powerful force in the part of the world that is mostly needed that is actually a force for stability. So not mm-hmm. only we will remove chaos, we'll actually find a force that actually maintains stability. We will have mm-hmm. normalized Iran, Iran with a huge population of people that are eager to contribute not just to the country, but to the world, will be a natural ally to every other country in that region, including Israel. And the the world will actually breathe uh, um, in relief because of that, because I don't, I don't know if you could point to a conflict in the Middle East 
there's not a single conflict in the Middle East that the Islamic Republic of Iran is not behind it. Imagine if you didn't have that. Imagine Israel if and Palestine, like those before the Arab, before what you call the Islamic Republic of Iran, man. That that happened a long time ago. <laughs> Even but like the Islamic Republic of Iran came in nineteen seventy nine. Without Islamic without Islamic Republic of Iran, that would have been resolved by now. It would have okay. been resolved by now. All right, all right. So let me continue. All right, like so. Uh, I got your point, but real politically speaking, America is an empire, right? So imperialically, you know, I don't. I, you keep talking about America. You are you are ignoring the people and their their, their own uh, ability to build their own future in that region. I, I don't know why. You, but I'm trying to say though, because America would hinder that. Though. I'm just saying America would not help that. America, America would hinder that. America would not hinder that. America, America benefits from having more countries that are liberal democracy. Every country. That's what they say. That's what they say. No, no. Okay, can I no, just let me just finish? No, I don't. Finish. I don't fuck what they say. I, well, that's what data shows. Every country that is a sl- strong liberal democracy has become a major source of um, power and, and unity and friendship and stability for the United States and other liberal democracies. One of liberal our best democracies don't go to. One of our best friends is Saudi Arabia. I don't think that's a liberal democracy. Is a Saudi Arabia a liberal democracy? That doesn't. That doesn't contradict what I said. That doesn't contradict what I said. When I say liberal democracies are great allies for United States, you finding a country that is not a liberal democracy that is an ally of United States doesn't contradict what I said. It actually confirms that if Saudi Arabia was a liberal democracy, it would have been a better ally of United States. It would have it's been preferable if Saudi. No, but okay, but can it would I have speak? been okay. even better. It okay. would have can been I improved. Armin, can I speak? Fine. All right. Yeah. So, so my uh, what do you call it? This is where we like we were completely diverge. I think America is one of the what do you call it? Uh, very harmful. Uh, has done a lot of damage in, around the world, not just in the Middle East, around the world. Okay, it says it loves liberal democracy, but it has overthrown so many liberal democracies, whether they be communists. Where they be other things if they said communism, if they communists said, are not, not liberal look, democracies. <laughs> look, look, what do you call it? Salvador Allende in Chile was a liberal democracy. He got elected. He got elected. No. He got That's elected. a democracy. It's not a liberal democracy. There is a okay, difference okay, between okay, democracy and liberal okay, democracy. Okay, fine. Like or, or, okay, like, democracy is fine. But anyway, like to to coup that to, to coup that with Augusto Pinochet is something else. So what it is that so in the Middle East, especially, I don't think like it has shown what their best allies are the Sheikh and the dictatorship they put in place that ignore their will, the, the will of their people, whether it's Saudi Arabia, Qatar, uh, uh, Emirates, uh, Turkey, uh, uh, Egypt. Uh, all these places are good friends of America. All these places are dictatorship that ignore the will of their people and uh, what it called. Uh, go for the will of the American government. So these are the best friends. These are the people they, they, put, uh, they put in place. So because they know if the will of the people come into power, it would go against what the American uh, empire wants. So historically speaking, and uh, what you call real politically speaking, even was uh, what you call it, um, Henry Kissinger said, to be an enemy of, uh, of the United States. Uh, I'll, hold on, I have this quote over here. Okay, uh, while you figure that out, can I say something? Here's the thing. Yeah, okay, so there's difference between there's a difference between supporting democracy and supporting liberal democracy. Okay, so mm-hmm. democracies um, there needs to be a limit on democracies because not mm-hmm. everything uh, is ba- should be based on majority rule. That's why mm-hmm. liberalism liberalism limits democracies, right? So mm-hmm. liberalism means there's certain things that the majority cannot decide. For example, you cannot decide. But if the majority just democratically wants to execute gays, that is a liberal democracy does not allow that, right? So if mm. you keep making examples of like democracies, not all of them is ideal. That's why there needs to be a limitation. That's why what I support is liberalism, not just democracies. Liberalism by itself has the democratic elements within it, but it also understands that fundamental human rights needs to be protected against the majority rule, right? Mm. And that's what... I'm, Keep ex- but as an empire, me- though, but as an empire, though, you want to control certain things, certain aspects. So even economically speaking, so even li- in liberal democracies, for example, if the people decide 
to nationalize this company or not, or what, to kick out this American company and to what you call to become friends with a Russian company or a Chinese company, it ain't going to work, buddy. So as in that speaking, as real politics, as American speaking, as what you call, okay, like this is the Henry Kissinger quote, to be a friend, to be an enemy of America is dangerous. To be a friend of America, it is fatal. So, so I, 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 this is why I warn like young, young Iranians like yourself, and uh, yes. like so to, to be to to be wary of the American friendship because I think if if what do you no, call no, it? Wait, tell uh, no wait no, no, like, tell one last, let to, me just let that me, to let Israel me, Germany Japan Taiwan South Korea every single country that is now developed every single country that is powerful right now has benefited from their friendship with the United States I don't know what you're talking about that quote is ridiculous. No, because like, but there's so many other countries where like we just fucking we just fucked over people and less less. For example, in the Middle East as well. Yeah, you see things that okay, Lebanese. You see things that black and white. Armin, can I just speak? Lebanese Christians, you know about them, right? Lebanese Christians. Lebanon was mostly a Christian country. Was called the Paris of the Middle East. Uh, Beirut was called the Paris of the Middle East. And then Palestinians migrated there. Nah, nah, it's not the Paul, It's not the fault of the Palestinians. The, the Israelis invaded. No, the Israelis invaded. No, no. And the reason why pa- the migration from Palestine to Lebanon is what changed it, changed the demographics in Lebanon. That's what it, that's what started it. No, but like okay, but that's not what you call. But that's not what uh, that made the Israeli. The, what the, the, reason, the reason. The reason. The reason. The reason. The reasons why Lebanon is a, is almost a failed state right now is because of Hezbollah. There, Hezbollah was, wasn't 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 there until uh, what do you call it, until uh, Israel invaded. Yeah, Israel, uh, well, Hezbollah yeah, was I'm a direct reaction. About, uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, and again, that was not a failed state back then. Right now, it's a failed state. Okay, so it it's was a, a failed it's a bank- state when Israel invaded. Even okay, if, okay, uh, like, uh, one last thing. So I, see, that- see how one side see how one sided you are. You keep thinking about United States interventions in all these other countries, but you fail to see that the actual imperialist force here is the Islamic Republic of Iran that is meddling in other countries. You know, when you mm-hmm. right now when United States is meddling. So here's the thing: I completely acknowledge that in the past United States has done many things that I condemn. You fail to see the other side. You fail to see that United States Army right now is the army that is holding peace and stability around the world, which without it, we will have absolute chaos. You fail to see that. I see the crimes of the, I see, let me finish, let me finish. I see the crimes that the US military has committed and I condemn it, but I also see the other side of it. I also see the fact that the reason why we have such level of prosperity and trade is because the United States taxpayer is, is paying for it with their military. Okay, mm-hmm. so and all the other countries are just free riding it. I, I I noticed that. I see that the imperialism that is happening today, right? That the actual mm-hmm. imperialism that is happening today is is being done by the Islamic Republic of Iran. Because when right now, when United mm-hmm. States in, is in Iraq right now, okay. Mm-hmm. Again, I know in the past they have done crimes that I condemn, but it is with the permission of the Iraqi government. Okay, mm-hmm. I see that. When in most in most of other places they have, they try to abide like by international laws. I know they have violated international laws before, and I condemn that. Right now, but if you take a snapshot of what we're seeing in the world right now, it is the Islamic Republic of Iran that is in Lebanon, meddling in Lebanon politics, meddling in Iraq's politics. They're in Yemen, you know. They're in, in many countries in Africa. And they're mm-hmm. there without permission and influencing politics against mm-hmm. the will of their people. That is that is imperialism. Do you condemn that? Do you understand that they're trying to create a Shia empire around the region mm-hmm. and create mm-hmm. a Shia crescent against Israel mm-hmm. and Gulf Arab countries? Do you I think. Or, you okay, can I just? Okay, let me let me speak. Okay, yeah. I think Iran or the, the Salafid or uh, before that the Parthians or etc. Uh, what do you call it? Is in the, is from that region and uh, it can play a big power in that region. Because it is from that region, it has a history in that region. America, on the other hand, is very far interlocator and it doesn't care about the people. It sees them beneath its feet, like what it calls, whether they be all Middle Eastern. This is America. I'm talking about America as if it's a person. 
You're talking about America as if it's a person. It's military bases. Military. Why is that? What? What? Like, I, I can understand Iran has military bases in Lebanon, okay, because of the the Shia connection. I cannot understand why, on like on God green earth, that America has so many military bases in the Middle East or even or like in Asia. Like, you know, like there has no play, business. You understand? There. You under, You understand the religious arguments, but you don't understand the the. The secular liberal excuses that we have, reasons that we have. Secular, the, the secular, for, like, yeah, empire, no, empire, empire no, building, me, empire building, empire building. Like, what no, empire no, but, are you talking about? There's no empire. You're stuck in, you're stuck in the Cold War ages. Like we're past oh that. Okay. There were military bases around the world. That's not an empire. Eight hundred. What, yeah, what when, 800, no, 800? because an empire. That was yeah, two, an 800, empire 800, 800. An empire doesn't ask you permission to build military bases in your country. Like if, for example, if United States have, like, do you think that United States has military bases in the Philippines against the wishes of the Philippine government? You're, you're, that is, that is completely backwards. Okay. An empire, if, for example, United States has military bases in the Philippines. Okay. You know who wants United States to have military bases in the Philippines? Mm -hmm. Philippines. That is not an empire. An empire just goes and builds military bases in your countries by force. Doesn't wait for your permission. The Philippines mm -hmm. will beg the United States to build military bases. And because, mm -hmm. for example, the Philippines cannot protect itself against China by itself. So it won when Germany has military bases, uh, U.S. military bases in Germany, guess who wants that? Germany wants that. Guess who wants no, that? Japan. Yeah, German, the who? German people don't want that. The German people don't want that. The Italian people don't even want that either. They have to get the fuck out, but they, they don't do. get the fuck out. No, they don't. They do. No, they, the, they, the, they, the, the, the majority of Germans and Italians don't want the American military bases in their the, country. The, the, the democratic the government. The, the, okay, the, the governments that they have elected has given the Americans the go ahead to do that. Okay, if these countries, if these countries wanted to, for years, military bases to leave their country, they could do so with, they could do so like that. So, uh, empires, uh, they can do that like that. They could do that like that. If mm -hmm. guess what? You know how I know this? Okay, you know how I know this? Because in the Philippines, the previous president Duterte did that, and the United States military left. Duterte said, "Like get," Duterte said, "Get out of here. We don't want your help." And the United States left. And then the next president came in and like that guy, that guy was wrong. Come back here. And the United States came back. That is not the actions of an empire because empires don't wait for the permissions of their colonies to go and have military bases and not have military bases. Okay, I mean, like, okay, like we're going to finish up soon. All right, last thing. So with the Lebanese Christian thing, okay? The Lebanese Christians, they were so pro-American and they were supported by America and Israel at the beginning, yeah? The same people right now hate America and uh, Israel because they abandoned them. They fucked them over. They use them to get what they want, but they didn't get what they call do it, do it for. So right now, the Lebanese phalanges, if you go to, to Ashrafia in Lebanon, they're friends uh, mostly with Hezbollah and et cetera. They're, they're, they're nominal friends with Hezbollah and et cetera. But you know who, they, they, you know who the Lebanese Christians they don't like? Israel and America. So what I'm trying to say is and, like, you know, the, the, like, you know, same thing with the Iranian people right now, they're going to be like what they go, what they call, they're, they're going to what they call hype you up. They're going to become friends like you, but sooner or later, they're going to abandon you. So many friends of America and Israel hate them right now because they abandoned them. They use them for what they wanted to do because that is what empires do. So uh, the same thing. So if, if like, let me just finish one last thing. Okay. So if America gets their hands or Israel gets their hands on uh, Iran, they want to cut it up into little countries, you know, Arab, uh, Arab, uh, what do you call it? Arab Iran, uh, Kurdish Iran, uh, Mujahideen because they're going to get something else. They want to cut it up their country and they're going to neuter their country because as an empire it would benefit them more to cut you up into little countries and uh, what do you call it? And to make you weak and to rule you in that way. And like, it will be just total chaos. It will be, it will, what they would do to Iran, uh, to Iran would make Libya look like a cakewalk. All right, speak. I think this is a form of uh, bigotry of lower expectations. You underestimate the will of the Iranian people. Okay, The Iranian people, once set free, they will build their own country. And uh, the w world powers and every other country will not be able to ignore Iran because Iran will be too powerful and too economically developed for any country to ignore.
Yeah. Okay. What I'm trying to say, don't, don't trust the Americans or the Israelis, because we've seen what happened with the Lebanese Christians. Now, this, is, this is why you don't understand. Geopolit you know, politics is not based on trust. Politi you don't need to trust anybody. You need to just become too, too economically important for anybody to ignore you. The, mm -hmm. the, the relationships of different nations is not built on trust. It's, it's, it's based on becoming too important to ignore, mm -hmm. too important not to uh, not to be wor a worthy uh, ally, too important to um, challenge, right? Mm -hmm. So the Indian people have the skills, they have the mindset, and they have the values to build their own country. And once they become powerful enough and economically developed enough, okay, you don't need to build relationship based on trust. You will build relationships based on mutual benefit mm -hmm. this is okay and one of the best ways to what you call to do that is to not let america or israel to call the military shots or to have what he called military uh to what he call take over uh in iran because as it is right now actually israel is uh, has talk and talk with your uh, neighbor what's uh, your neighbor called azerbaijan yeah they have a military bases there uh, not military bases but uh, what he called uh, what he called airports and giving them uh, what he called the drones and stuff like that so they can use Azerbaijan as a uh, as a launching pad to bomb Iran. So that's what I'm saying. So they don't have your best interest in you. So uh, you speak uh, black and whites. When you say they, um, there are many people in Israel that um, the Israeli government. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. They, you, you know what I'm talking. I'm not talking about the, the, the whole entire Israeli population. That's what I'm talking about. When we're talking about politics, we're talking about the Israeli government. But that is uh, that is what I wanted to say. Like uh, finish up, and uh, that's it. Right. So That's revolution again, again. Revolutions are meant to be fought by the people of the uh, of the country themselves, right? So this is this is Iranian people making their own decisions, making their own deciding their own destiny, right? Mm -hmm. And they need advice on who to trust and who to trust. They have they already know they have already seen uh, that politics and revolutions are a are a game based on um, who manages to fight uh, the best and who manages to gain the power. And once you have the power, then you will decide how you manage your relationships with other powers that be, right? So coming out and telling, I, I think it's a bit condescending to tell the Iranian people um, to not trust the Americans, okay? We, we Iranian people, know their history more than many other people around the world. And they've already seen that this is not a game of, that you cannot trust, uh, you know, other countries or other governments. And this is a, the, the only allies that you could get is allies that are based on, that are working with each other based on mutual benefits. And the way to win a revolution is to do welcome support for, from foreigners, both powerful, and not so powerful because revolution cannot be fought alone. But just because you ask for help and just because you welcome it, that doesn't mean that you're trusting these nations. You will um, you will be skeptical about any form of support that you get, and you will understand. You will try to analyze the motivations that they have and make yourself important enough for them to have to rely on your success for. For mutual benefit, this is this is a this is a this is how politics are won. Yeah. This is how revolutions are won. You do not there you do not invest in the kind uh, the kind heartedness of an entire nation. You understand what their interests are, and you play the game in a way that aligns your interests with their interests in in, in specific strate strategic um, you know strategic decisions that you have to make and those will be temporary decisions and it's not going to determine your long-term uh, policies going forward each every you know and and i and i think that again coming out and i, I do think like a lot of iranian people if you talk to them like that they're not going to welcome it because they you're gonna the way that you're talking about the iranian people is as if they're puppets in a in a game that are being manipulated by world powers and if you want to give them advice like that a lot of them will just reject you 
and whatever you stand for because you're just acting like they're pawns in a game and and they're not they're not the Iranian people are trying to take their own destiny into their own hands and you uh, they're already being they're already in chain uh, by the Islamic Republic and they're trying to get their freedom and you acting like they're going they're going to go from you know the Islamic Republic that's deciding their destiny to all of a sudden now America deciding their destiny um with it, it's just condescending and and I don't think that's the best way for for you to you know your message I'm just trying to what it, I'm just trying to say what it called as how I see it because I've seen it in Libya I've seen it in Syria I've seen it in Afghanistan I've seen it in many places that is it anyway it was nice talking to you man I'll see you later man thank you bye can I post yeah, yeah, post it. Yeah, yeah, yeah.